Hey guys! So in my last video, a lot of you guys showed interest in comic pages. So I thought it would be pretty appropriate to make this video about that. So to start on a new canvas, you go to File and New and you have the two options, Standard and Comic. You can make comic pages on either one, it doesn't matter. The only difference is with Standard, you can work with the canvas size yourself. While Comics, depending on the type of comics, the dimensions of the page is already set and everything. If you wanted to make a comic page like a professional comic page, you can go to the comic tab up here and then click what comic you're trying to make. And then everything right here, you know, the resolution, the background color, all that good stuff is here. Finishing line, book binding, but we'll talk about that later. This is all for the guidelines. So I'll show you right here. When you make a comic page, there's going to be guidelines. Let me, uh, let me make the background white maybe it'll be easier to see so this first part i'm pretty sure is called the book binding and then the second part right here is the safe zone so everything that you want to draw is supposed to be in here it's not going to stop you from drawing outside of it but it's just there to let you know like you should probably just keep your lines in here to work with the guidelines just go up to view and you can hide them so you know if you're if they're getting distracting you can just click right here, show comic guidelines, and then they'll be gone. And if you want to put them back on, just click that again. And if you want to work with them, you know, change the spacing between them, you can go to comic guidelines settings. And the same little options that show up when you're first making the guideline stuff is going to pop up right here. So like I said, the book binding, the finish line, that's this area right here. You can change that up. The safe line, which is here, change that too. Bleeding. I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, not super sure what that means. That might have to do with the printing and stuff. I know bleeding with the paint bucket tool and the magic wand means it kind of goes over what you selected. I don't know how to explain that, but you can work with that yourself. And then skipping this, there's the spine wood, which you might be wondering, what does that mean? You know, the spine of a book, right? And you don't see any of that here. It's not highlighted because you can't do anything with it yet unless you click the spread cover page right here. You click that, press OK, let me zoom out and see. It's as if you're going to design the back and the front of a book. So I'm not exactly sure the dimensions of a cover page. I want to go with 9000 just so you can see the guidelines there. And then if I were to go back to the comic guideline settings, you could mess with this right here, the spine width. If I was to put that to like 10, see, this would be the spine. I'm not really experienced with making comics and comic books, so you can kind of figure out, if you are making one, you can figure out how big the spine is supposed to be, but I'm just showing you how to work with it, <laughs> so. As I said earlier, you don't have to open a new comic page to get all of this stuff. So let me open just a standard page, which is, you know, what you would use for any normal drawing. You can put guidelines on this too by doing comic guideline settings right here and then you can just fix everything right here it's the same options as last time press ok and then notice how since the canvas is way smaller there's a smaller drawing room you can fix that again go back to view comic page settings and then work with that let's put it to six there we go and just like the comic pages you can hide the comic guidelines by going to view and show comic guidelines but before we hide this i'm going to show you how to make a panel which is i'm pretty sure what caught most of your guys' attention during my last video so what you're going to want to do is i'm going to lock that really fast make a new layer because the panel is going to be on whatever layer you're clicked on so you don't want to make it on a layer that has the background color go for a new layer and then you're going to go up to layer the tab up here and then click add panel material click that and then this little pop-up box will show up there's not a lot of options it's just a coloring which is either black by default or you can go for foreground color which is pretty much just a color that's in here and then you're gonna choose the width of the line I'm just gonna leave it at six because I just don't care and here it is it's gonna show up on the safe line so there it is so if you want a bigger panel you're gonna have to mess with the comic guidelines and again you could do this on the comic page so I'm gonna put this back to the normal comic page let me just undo a bunch of stuff right now and then I'm gonna do the same thing layer and then add panel material not gonna change anything and I did it on the same layer so that's bad let me lock this and then do it on a new layer even though even though that's what I told you to do I didn't even follow my own things so there we go if I was to hide the guidelines right here where is it? You would see it's right here. 
So now it's time to start actually making the panels. So usually if you're doing a comic page like this, you should start drawing first. So if you want, you can hide the panel and then let me put on the guidelines just so that you know where to draw. That is the wrong canvas, thank you. So here are all the panels and here's the panel um, layer right here. You see layer four has a little at symbol. The at symbol means that you can't erase anything. So if I have this eraser right here, I can't erase it. I'll talk about that later though. Right now we're gonna make the panels. So how do you make this big box into those little boxes? Well, you're gonna go for this tool right here. It is called, where is it? It is called the panel divide right here. And right here you have the kerning. And then this is either pronounced leading or leading, I'm not really sure. The kerning is for the spacing between vertical cuts. And then leading or leading is the horizontal. I'll show you right now. So I'm gonna do this panel first. You're gonna have to drag it across so that it cuts both sides. You can't just do this because as you can see, nothing happened, see? You have to go all the way across. So we do that right now. And there we go, you see that? It cut the panel into two different panels. And like I said, the for the vertical line is, let me look at my paper, kerning. So it's three right now. If you wanted to make it a bigger space, just amp that up a bit. Let's try again with eight. There we go. Notice the space is a lot bigger. Do it smaller. Let's do two. Way smaller. And again, you can change this right here. This is millimeters, but you can do pixels, which would be super small with two. I don't know if you'd be able to see it. Yeah, you can't even see it if I zoom in. There it is. But we're not going to go for pixels right now. Let's just redo that for the hundredth time. There we go. And then you want to make this panel right here. Notice how the spacing is different because right here, for it's done six. So if I wanted to keep it equal to this, I could go back to two and then do that again. And if you want to do diagonal, which is right here, what you would have to do is hold down the shift key. So I'm going to start, I'm going to click, I'm holding it down right now, and then I'm going to hold down shift and drag it across here. Let me put it up here. And there we go. You see there's diagonal right there. But first, I made a mistake. Notice how it was like cut into two. I should have probably cut here first. There we go. So I can separate those two. Let's see where else I have to separate. I guess I can separate this too. See, we all learn as we go. Well, I learned that you can't do it in the corner. So let me go right here, get that cut out, and then do that again so that it's an actual triangle thing right there. And here we go. You see there's a little sliver right there. I can erase that later. I'll show you how, but first you have all of these panels. Let me hide that. That looks pretty good. It's a little, it's a little weird, but looks pretty good. Now let's say you wanted to move it around or you wanted to change the size. So how do you do that? That is where this tool comes in, the object tool. Let me go right here, yep, object right here. For my previous video, I had no idea what this did because it seemed like it wasn't doing anything, but apparently it's for panels. So if you wanted to change this shape or anything, go to the object tool and then click on the panel you wanna change. And then you see these little markings come up. Let me zoom in so maybe you can see them better. Nope, it's gonna stay the same size, but those right there, those little points, that's how you can change the size. So let me go click on it and then see, it's just a free range transform. I can do that if I wanted to. There's these buttons, all these buttons show up. For the settings, you click on settings, you can change the color. I'm gonna change it just so that I can show you something easier. I'm gonna do it to bright red. And then you can click X, which is to delete it, but I don't wanna do that. Let's say I wanted to make this a tiny panel and then put it on top of this panel just because. I've seen some comics do that. Maybe this is to zoom in on something very important showing. And you can see right here that the red outline is underneath the black panel. Let's say you wanted to put this panel over that one. You would just click the up button right here. Let me click it one more time because it's not showing. There we go. Now this outline is over the black one. To stop editing this panel, you could just click on a different panel to edit that one, or you can just click on a different tool and everything is set like that. 
Let me do this again. I can get rid of this one right here. This weird long panel that nobody needs. I'm going to click X and it's gone. Let me get rid of this. There we go. This doesn't look very good, but listen, it's fine. It's just an example. So if you're wondering how to get this line out, because you're not going to want that, the only way to do it is to erase it. But like I said, you can't really erase anything because since there's a little at symbol on the panel page, it means you can't really erase anything. You can still draw on it, I'm pretty sure, but you can't erase it. So there's two different ways to going with this. You can either make a new layer underneath it, click on the panel layer and then merge it down so that it's just like a normal layer like any other layer and then you do that. Or what you can do is, let me go back. It is again at a panel layer so I can't do anything. You could go up to layer and then click rasterize material. And then the layer becomes a normal layer. So it's the same thing, it's just doing it different ways. Let me just make it the lazy way. There we go. So I kind of erased whatever was in here and then I could do whatever drawings I wanted underneath the panel so that nothing goes over it. Of course, this is just one style of comic pages. If you want to do something different like a comic strip, you can do the same thing. So that's pretty much all I had for this video. All I did was talk about the guidelines and how to make panels and how to move them around and all that stuff. So I hope that it was a bit helpful. It might sound a little confusing. I know this was like really scary for me, but I did all my research and it's a lot easier than you think as long as you practice with it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and I hope that you use this in the future. Also, I'm gonna say really fast that some of you guys may be thinking if you've heard of the program, I think it's called Medibang. I don't know how it's pronounced, but something like that. There's the option, this option is on that program too. And a lot of you guys have been sending me comments saying, oh, Medibang and Fire Alpaca are very similar. The truth is, Medibang was actually Fire Alpaca Cloud, but they changed the name. So it's the exact same program, just a few differences. So yeah, in case any of you guys were hoping to post a comment about that. Okay, I'm done. Thank you so much for watching. I post tutorials every Tuesday as Tutorial Tuesday and Speed Paints every Saturday. So if you want to subscribe so you never miss a video that would be pretty cool feel free to share the video feel free to favorite it and like it and add a comment and any video suggestions i take video requests that looks really cool also you can find me on multiple websites which are in the video descriptions anyways thank you so so much for watching bye, bye.